And we're going to find that on the left hand side. I'm going to close up the boogie and scroll down to the sales. Now there's a couple sales reports here. You got the sales by customer summary, but that has like the cost of goods sold stuff in it. What we want over here is the sales by customer, so the sales by customer, not the income by customer. That's the easiest report to work with. So I'm going to open it. I'm going to change in the range in from 01, 01, 22, tab, 12, 31, 22, tab, run it to refresh it. There we have it. Now it's got some sub accounts down here and those are going to mess us up. I don't really want the sub account info in there. So I'm going to collapse the data. And now we've just got a set of numbers and a total at the bottom. Perfect pie chart potential. And so notice that the total down here doesn't tie out exactly to what's on the income statement. If I go to the income statement, for example, I've got uh, 10, 200 instead of 10, 280 or whatever it was. You want to be aware of that. It might not tie out because QuickBooks doesn't force you to add a customer every time you post something to an income account. However, if you are using the invoices and sales receipts, then it, it should tie out, right? But if it's a little bit different, then you want to recognize that and possibly adjust it in Excel uh, in order to run your reports to make it tie out possibly and, and then note that or at least be able to note that. So when people have a question, you can answer their questions uh, you know, related to it. So that's just something to keep in mind. Remember that the, the accounts receivable on the balance sheet and the accounts payable do tie out almost all the time because QuickBooks forces you to add the proper information, customer and vendor, every time you hit the these two accounts so that the subledger breaking out by customer and vendor will tie out. They don't do that for the sales side of things, which has its pros and cons. I think it's a good thing that they don't really, but it means that the subledger won't always tie out if unless you enter all the data a certain fashion. Okay, so noted. So now we're gonna go to the tab to the right. Let's export it. Select in the drop down. We're going to export to Excel. You do need Excel to export it, of course. We're going to open it up in Excel. There it is. I'm going to I'm going to enable the editing.